Hey there guys, this is I'm Real Ninja, and welcome back to Let's Play Crystalis. So, in the last episode we made it over this way, but I did a little bit of grinding and a bit of backtracking. I went way too far to the left. There we go. Uh, first off, these things? The little jellyfish? Insanely good for leveling up. I'm not sure if I brought that up. It's been like two weeks since I've gotten to record. 160 experience each time they barely move. When they do, it's like two to three pixels at a time. So I mean, they're really easy to hit. 160 EXP per kill and 30 gold per drop. I went ahead. I bought the platinum armor. Uh, Amazonas has it for $200 less than uh, Portoa does, so I went ahead. I bought it there. I didn't get the sacred shield because there's a better shield we'll be getting in just a little bit. Not in here, though. Also, that enemy just glitched horribly. Alternatively, you can actually grind in this uh, cave. Not recommended, though, because these uh, these green dragons that we're about to see love casting paralysis. Plus, you have to constantly switch swords. I... I had that coming. Why I actually, I'm being dumb here for a second, I came prepared. I bought five Lysis plants. There's also, no, it's not here, it's... Okay. I was getting worried for nothing. There's a pink mushroom, I thought, that spawned on this side, uh, on the left. Oh my god. It's not gonna be one of these episodes, is it? Because I'd rather not it be one of these episodes. And give me just one second. Okay. Now, the very first intersection you come to, there's not much to do. Don't, uh, the right is completely empty. The left leads to the second intersection, which also leads here, but if you go straight up, there will be a destroyable wall. which gives you a magic ring. Perfectly, yeah. Extremely useful. I love it. They give you one at the beginning of the dungeon rather than, oh look, we're gonna give it to you near the end. I love game design like that, where it's like, here, you're gonna probably need this. So, oh my god. Words cannot describe how sick I am of paralysis. I'm gonna go ahead and also heal up. I'm also getting really sick of these flying things. It's the, uh, the second alcove that you hit, though, is the one you want to go to. Because this will actually, you know, let you progress. And if you head right at the very first intersection, you can head right at and then go down. Another breakable wall. Also, you're going to want to keep your uh, sword of water equipped pretty much the entire time through here. And you keep heading to the left, and up. I just realized I led you all in one big circle. I think. I don't even know where I am now. Oh yeah, it is. It's, it's one big circle. I stand corrected, I'm sorry. It's the second... second downward intersection. Right after... let's see, is there anything up here? Oh, yes! That's not where I wanted to go. So, um... New mechanic. Pits. Don't fall in them. 
because I'm... <laughs> apparently I'm not good at dodging them. Even though they're completely stationary. Okay. Let's, let's try this again. Also, let me go ahead and cure this paralysis because this is already getting on my nerves. I understand NES games are meant to be hard, but why this hard? The least they could do is have the conditions cure over time. Also, crap, that's not what I want. I didn't want to charge up to three there. So, stand close to the edge, not at the edge, and wait for the platform to come across. I almost fell back down. I swear to god, if I get paralyzed one more time... However, if you do get paralyzed one more time, there's a lysis plant right there. Just waiting for you. I'm gonna go ahead and also heal back up to full. And we've made it to what looks like a completely abandoned town. It's the only door we can actually go in. And here we find some guy named Clark. I can't remember if someone said something about him. It's seriously been two weeks. But there's a female sorcerer here. She came from Dragonia, turned everyone into zombies. She's very clever. Be careful. NPC dialogue. Yeah. Can't go in any of the other houses. If you talk to the zombies, all they say is a bunch of, you know, lines. So yeah, can't hurt them, can't you know, do anything with them. They won't hurt you. There's also a bunch of Dragonia soldiers in here, don't bother with them. Just head straight for the right and up to fight this guy again. And it's extremely simple. He's weak to water now, as well as wind. And for all that, we get a fruit of power. Uh, he is non-optional, you do have to fight him again. But here, here we have another, um... Another new enemy. Invisible mages. Oh god, I'm about to die. And let's go ahead. The uh, the thing with these mages, they can only be hurt by level three magic. And your best bet for hurting them is um, uh, fire, because it'll kill them in one hit, or rather three hits. But it'll catch them in the loop and hit them three times and kill them. Can't do anything there. Also, they can hurt you while they are invisible, and it kind of sucks. I'm also going to go ahead and use my uh, fruit of power that I got. That's a, that's a jerk move. Come on, Moth, really? Also, I hate this place. These moths. These moths. They constantly just appear. They're like the, uh, what's it called? Those bats in that one cave that had the fog lamp. They will just knock you into everything. Okay. So, ignore those guys. Head down to the bottom. You can dodge pretty much every mage in this room by just hugging the bottom wall. And if you come up here... Sorcerer in the back of this chamber... That's... it's messy, though. 
They're both messy up. Can't escape. Have to fall down. And it takes you all the way back to the beginning. So for those of you playing along, and uh, are listening a little bit ahead of time, don't... Don't head to the back of that room. It's a bad idea. I'm getting really sick of these mages. It's, it's not like they even deal a bunch of damage. It's that they're just you know, circles on the ground. So, uh, yes, okay. It's the only NPC that actually you know, responds to you hitting them with anything. And there's Sebera. Now, this fight can either go really well or really poorly for you. Can you dodge slow-moving projectiles? Do you have tons of magic? Have <laughs> tons of magic with you? The answer is yes to either of those. It's a very simple fight. Just, you know, keep a good distance from you, uh, uh, between the two of you. And hit him with L3 a few times. L2 also works, but L3 is by far your best, be uh, best bet. And they still have Messia. What? Uh, um. Okay, Sabera, we need to talk. Not very evil if you're like, oh, I'm this big bad sorcerer. Oh, you defeated me. Here, have this. It's a broken statue. Okay. However, he uh, he told us where they're going to be. An altar for the statue of gold. Legend says that if the gold, uh, the statue of gold is placed properly, we can return safely, uh, safely from any storm. I'm actually going to warp back to Portoa so that way we can have a, uh, yeah, rest up. But this broken statue, this this can't be the statue of gold. Also, I'm dumb. There's an inn in Joel. Let me go ahead and also equip the shell flute. I mean, I've seen the altar. I know where the altar is. It's literally just, you know, right over here. And up a bit. If memory serves. Memory probably... Oh, yep, I was right. So... Nothing happens. Okay. Maybe if we go talk to Kensu. Kensu might know something. But, um, uh, yeah. You actually... Um, since I didn't mention this in the Sebera fight, um... You have to be at least level 11 to even damage the guy. Which is why I went ahead and I also, you know went up to 13. Also, Kensu isn't there. Okay. Who knows where Kensu's gone? Actually, I'm just gonna warp back. And ask the fortune teller. Because honestly, I don't know what to do at this point, because... I figured getting to Sabera and fighting him would take 15 minutes. Fortune Teller isn't there. However, while I'm right here, I'm going to sell my bronze armor. Alright. Uh... I'm gonna feel real dumb for attempting this. 
Maybe it's in a channel behind the palace? Okay. It's the base for a fine perfume. Okay. So, the elders aren't gonna help me. I kinda figured. They're never helpful when you use telepathy. Most of the time it's just like, figure it out on your own, jerk! So, Kensu said that he lost something and it might be in the channel behind the palace. So, let's call our trusty dolphin. And we now have the love pendant. So, apparently this is the thing Kensu has lost. However, I'm also going to step in here and speak with Asina. Okay. Asina said that the pendant's hers. Or, rather, someone... She gave it to someone. Which is probably Kensu. Uh, dolphin? Dolphin, I'm right here. Dolphin. Seriously, bro? You're really gonna do that to me right now. Alright. Well, let's head back to Kensu's shack and see if he's there now. And if he isn't, I don't know what to do. And I'll probably end the episode. He's not here. Let me go to Joel and end the episode at Joel. Because... Oh, wait, I haven't spoken with the mayor. Let me go speak with the mayor, and then... Our village is saved. I pray we see Messia again. Now I don't have to be sacrificed. You're a... Wow. Wow. Our life can return to normal. There's bound to be someone here that says anything, you know, useful. I can live safely. Good. <sighs> Alright, so in the next episode of Crystalis, I'm going to figure out what to do. Till then, this has been I'm Real Ninja. Take care, and have fun.